those who become are those who never settle. They know that there is always a better and greater version. Believers, in times of adversity, remember to anchor your faith in God's unwavering love and promises. Trust in His divine plan and find strength in His presence. May this message serve as a source of encouragement and reaffirm your unshakable relationship with Him. Remain blessed as you listen. There are three areas that Satan attacks in your life. The moment you see these three areas under attack, know that your life is under intense attack. Number one, your passion for God. Your passion for God. Satan will not make you to be drinking and smoking and sleeping around. No, oh, sometimes it's, it's too much. It's the backsliding is too, it's too much. It's like a plane just landing anyhow. You will realize it fast and come back. So he will take it gradually. The passion for God. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. It's a sign that my spirit is still in tune. When people are already backsliding and the, the, the spirit of revival is eroding from their life, they lose fervor and fire for the things of God and for the house of God. Number two, your prayer life. Oh, I will pray by 10. And then you wake up 10.30 and say, Kai, I'm asleep, ma. You say, let me just stretch a little. 30 minutes. Stretch a little. You wake up and see that it's 3 o'clock. I say, oh, well, I mean, let's, let me take advantage of the night time. And it's already morning. And you will first feel bad. But after a few days, you become comfortable. And guess what? Satan will never strike you. He's not a fool. Listen, call Satan a deceiver, you are right. Call Satan an accuser, you are right. Call him a fool, you are wrong. Satan has an advantage of age. He is very old. Very old. Hallelujah. Very old. And he can take advantage. He has seen Moses, Adam, Abraham. He's lived through dispensations. And he has studied mankind as an entity. He has studied our vulnerability. The spiritual wear and tear that befalls men. Listen to my message, why revivals die. The mystery of the humanity of men. How the humanity of men can interrupt the program of God in the life of a man. If he does not sustain a system in the spirit to keep him in check. The Bible says by the strength of an ox is more good. By the strength of an ox. Hallelujah. Your prayer life. There are many of us here. I know it and I can discern by the spirit that our prayer lives are dying. Dying. Carelessness is a dangerous thing in the spirit. It's worse than immorality. I'm telling you. Carelessness. Gradually, gradually. You lose spiritual standards and it is very subtle one week you have not prayed you have not done anything satan will never attack you he's not a fool it's like a spiritual meter he's just allowing it to go down there are pastors who don't pray they snort their way to the poop he snort their way back rema is still coming that's what happened to samson samson slept with a prostitute immediately after that he removed the city gate satan kept quiet and left him delilah that girl, when she came, Samson, she now asked Samson, what's the source of your strength? He lied to her. She now tested it. You see how he was spiritually dead? Because a man who is spiritually alive would have picked the spirit behind that beauty. Now he was carnally minded. The Bible says to be spiritually minded is life eternal. And to be carnally minded is what? Death. Right? And then to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Many of us, our lack of prayer have made us foolish because we don't discern things spiritually again. 
when people annoy you you used to check things from the realm of the spirit but right now you have been depraved physically you respond to things sensually and that's the realm of satan you camp around the flesh realm he will finish you you can be jumping around i'm a new creation in christ till you die as if jesus didn't die for you because it takes understanding hallelujah prayer life we must be spiritual people all of a sudden when your parents want to get serious with god something just happens to their finances something just happens and you think it's your father or mother that are fighting no no it's a strategy from hell he knows that for as long as there is abundance there is now time to seek the face of the lord so he comes up with a system to take you away from the prayer place he knows hallelujah prayer number three the third thing that suffers many of you think i'm going to say the word of god no the third thing let me tell you the word of god can still be moving around in your life while you are dying is one of the is one of the biggest arsenals of satan's deception because the biggest area of confusion in a believer's life is his understanding of what the word of god is satan will not stop you from reading this he will say continue he can use this and destroy you because we don't even have an idea of what the word of god is we think proximity to the bible i'm reading ezekiel i'm reading proverbs that means that i'm getting it so he preoccupies you with it the third thing satan attacks when he wants to destroy you is relationships he kills your connection to people who have the power and the grace removes you from your spiritual family removes you from the company of men and women who can take advantage of their secret place and cover for you while you catch up spiritually he takes you away from people listen solitude is different from isolation when satan wants to destroy a man he cuts off that spiritual grafting and you are alone it's usually pride that keeps us in that position and when he strikes you one of the chief way he does it is he creates a reason for you to fight with everybody who can minister to you spiritually it's an it's a dangerous attack i'm showing you deep spiritual things so all of a sudden you are in prayer department you start having a problem with your hod you start having a problem with the assistant hod you start having a problem with the way they pray it's like we're taking too much time he uses offense you see that and you will usually find one or two pe persons to agree with you and say so you might you are observing it honestly me too i've been keeping quiet but this thing will we keep quiet like that you think it's a solidarity forum but you are dying because he's cutting you i have talked with many people and i can show you how the devil got advantage of them the bible says we are not ignorant of his strategy the word stratomai is his methodology satan has a skill there is a way he does it he isolates you and keeps you in a position where that spiritual bond is no longer there and it is difficult for somebody to even discern your pain because you see the beauty of brotherhood is that our discernments are connected there are times that this brother is about to fall and god will just show benga a dream and you say kai uh femi i don't know don't be offended though i saw something but when that isolation goes he uses offense number two he uses dishonor 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 is a key that satan uses to cut you away from your source of blessing dishonor is god helping us there are many of us you may be here but that connection is no longer there there are no seeing eyes there are no hearing ears if the devil pushes you he pushes you to the sea until you go and fall down it takes power 
So he attacks your relationship. Listen. Do all you can within your power to maintain relationships that bless you spiritually. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? I'm teaching you something that will bless you. Unbelievers know this. They guard jealously their relationships with people, colleagues around, authorities over their lives that can bless them spiritually because they understand that there is a mystery of their continuity that on the strength Elisha knew this and he could cheaply cut the mantle of Elijah and say if my own personal faith cannot pass this where is the God of Elijah many of us do not understand this hallelujah and certain things that can come cheap in our lives we struggle over it aimlessly because there is no understanding please guard relationships especially spiritual relationships they have a lot to do in your life there was a gentleman that i didn't see for a long time and then one day i saw him and i looked at him i said ah, how are you doing now and the guy looked at me he said apostle are you free i said no 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 i'm on my way going somewhere but i mean just talk to me give me a summary he said there's no way i can summarize what has happened in my life there is no way I can summarize it. And he was almost crying. I said, what's wrong? And he said, Apostle, if I tell you anything has gone right in my life, I'm lying. There was a time in that guy's life years ago. He insulted me and said certain things and I kept quiet. I had to pray for him. Because see, the anointing is a double-edged sword. I, I, I felt really sad for him. And I looked at him. I said, me, I don't curse people. It never comes out of my mouth. No, I don't curse people. However, there are side effects of certain things. I looked at him. I said, ah, I thought you were doing well. He said, nothing had worked in his life. Nothing. And I said, no, 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 no. This cannot happen. I want to bless you. I want to speak over your life. No job. No headway. You enter a relationship. The lady is happy. You start talking about marriage she will stop picking your call and all of that met one prophet who told him to bring one hundred and fifty thousand borrowed one hundred and fifty thousand brought it nothing happened that's the price you pay for ignoring not having discernment to ignore spiritual relationships cheap ladders that you can climb please pay attention to what i'm telling you 